Thanks for staying with us right here on E-Central. And like we told you just before the break, we've got a movie producer and a pundit who is right here to give us his whole analysis to a whole lot concerning remakes. Welcome to the show, Shala Thompson. Thanks, man. Thank you very much. Always good to see you, you know? Always a pleasure. I think the last time we saw was like Zoom. Yeah. So in person, <laughs> different, man. Yeah. Yeah. So let's zoom right now into Glamour Girls. You've seen the movie. Yes. What do you think about it? What's an overview of yours, you know? So we're jumping right to it. I think. Yes. Um... So, it, uh, first of all, I think it is one of the things that people complain about the most is yeah. the fact that it seemed rather incoherent. Now, the reason for this, uh, it's, it's hard for a lot of people to actually explain. It's hard to explain. It just seems like it was caught up in probably this, maybe the error actually happened in the editing room. You know, and it might not be the fault of the editor, it might just might be the... Maybe some higher power decided, you know what, let's try and keep this quick and let's cut out some scenes and let's just, and it, it's a major disrespect to the filmmaking process. Okay. So I feel that's one of the reasons why this suffered such a terrible fate. Oh, when you say incoherent, doesn't it start from script writing? So, so the thing is, now, this is one thing I realize that a lot of people do on Twitter comments and so on, even from viewers. The first thing they jump on is story, storyline. They say the story, the story, the story. That's fine. But with a fantastic story, it can still die a horrible death on the editing floor, especially with even executives. We see this happen with Hollywood movies, from Venom to even um, Morbius to other major movies, right? Now, the thing is, there's, you're right, yes, the story uh -huh. might have been a bit flawed, but the truth is, at the bottom of it all, it, there is a very strong possibility that that story could still have made sense. The truth is, it didn't exactly make sense also because of just the way it was, you know, the whole movie came together. You know, several times I see movies and I get reviews and I see negative reviews. I get to wonder, why does it happen this way? Because there are a whole lot of people who would have at least critic, criticized that movie mm. before it even came out, before it was even produced. So who is responsible? Who do we put the it's, blame on? So the thing is, um, Pride. Let's put the blame on Pride. You said there are a lot of people that would have reviewed this yes. movie before it came out. A lot of producers, a lot of executive producers, they fail to actually... Get, get it across to people who are not their friends or family to give an honest opinion on what they think. To say, okay, look, this is how this movie is. This is what we think should happen. Test audience. You need a test audience. And also, even with editing, let's say this movie, for example, rumor has it that this movie was supposed to be longer, obviously, which is mm -hmm. the issue with most movies. But then when it gets to a streaming platform, those guys decide, like, look, cut it down. Now, when you're cutting down a movie from three hours or three hours, over three hours to, let's say, two hours, the, that is something that is so disrespected that people just think, don't worry, just cut this, cut this, cut this, I'm sure it makes sense. But what they forget is that at the back of their minds, they have an idea of what this movie is already. So they're, they're, they're picking up the pieces or, you know, putting up the, put it in pieces mm -hmm. in places that are empty in their heads. And they think, no, the audience will understand. But the audience is there confused. But talking about the audience, the audience yeah. has responded positively to this. I mean, the movie is trending all around Nigeria and even in 16 mm. African countries. So how come? Did you say positive? Yes, it is. Where, in, in Doesn't what? it reflect in the number of views? No, I mean, it's trust a bad me. Movie. If, if, if there were, I, I hate to say this. If there was a trailer accident, right, which is bad, terrible, disgusting, it will get many views. That's my point. <laughs> so the point is people want to see. Unfortunately, also, there's the... Um, there's the habit of, okay, I want to see so I can also get into getting on the phone of mm -hmm. bashing Nigerian yeah. movies, which I hope would not become a thing because it could become a thing and that's a major problem. So it's like, it's the same thing I've said many times. We don't want to get to a point where people saying, I don't watch Nigerian movies becomes like a, uh, you know, like a fashion trend or like, you know, status symbol. Like, you know what I mean? I don't watch Nigerian movies. And with things like this, that's where it happens. That's where it starts. Now, Shala, you've yeah. seen a whole lot of remakes. Yeah. What do you think? Should we continue the trend or should we just, you know, Boycott it right now and move on with other streets. I honestly think we can continue the trend, right? Because it is reintroducing the old folks to the new folks. And also it's for us to say, look, this is what we did in the past. Let's bring it back. Let's respect it, right? And let's, you know, appreciate what the old guys did. But then do not disrespect the art of filmmaking, even for uh, local filmmaking or foreign filmmaking. There's even Lars von Trier, who is probably the most controversial director who likes to edit in the worst ways, still sticks by certain rules. Even your Quentin Tarantino, who could give you a wide shot, go to a close, tight, up, tight shot, all these guys still stick to rules. With a lot of Nigerian movies, when you have these execs who have no clue, but because they have the money, they can make the decisions, they do not care about the filmmaking process. And that is where the problem is, care. Half of these guys, even the new filmmakers, ask them if they've watched any classics. They haven't watched one. A simple classic, like even the biggest of them, for example, um, 
pick a movie from uh, uh, pick a movie from anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And you realize a lot of these guys, like Doctor Strangelove, for example. This was 1964. Doctor Strangelove still, without any establishment shots, understood that when you're moving from one scene to another, you should be able to exp like plan it in yeah. your shot list. Yeah. Like, okay, this is how this scene will end to get to the next one. Mm -hmm. In 1964. And we're not and, the, and this is something they didn't have a lot of technology then, but like fade away or whatever. But they still made that happen. No, but so here that, we don't. We don't so, respect the film. Before I let you go, uh, if yeah. if we were called to remake any of these classics, which of them would it be? So okay, so first of all, with uh, Nekka the Pretty Serpent, I was called in to fix it up, right? To you know change it up and so on. And um, I know the challenge I experienced because. Hey, had a lot of, and I did the best I could, you know, and, you know, even with that still, of course, the story was actually what, you know, and, and you'd hear all sorts from how this thing eventually happened and so on. But if I was told to do one, one that I know hit me very much was Diamond Ring. I love Diamond Ring. Oh, great. But you see, the thing is, I wouldn't even disrespect Diamond Ring. I wouldn't say, oh, I can't do it. No. I would go, I would look for the person that shot it the first time, ask the person about his experience, talk about how they went, what they went through, talk about the motivation behind the characters, how the characters felt, respect it to the point that it'll take like two years, because it's a classic diamond ring. You know, it's something that everybody remembers off the top of their heads. And then when I go at it, I, as I said, respectfully, mm. when having all the original cast members yeah. involved in some way, and also speaking to people, also by the time it's done, I will have a test audience, not just of young folk, of the old folks who watch the first one and get their opinion. Thank That's you weird. so much for coming around, Chola. Hey, always a pleasure, man. <laughs> always a pleasure.